Actually, this actress is like a goddess to me, Meryl Streep. So uh, it's very humbling and I don't think I deserve that at all. You know, <laughs> I'll have a cigarette. I love that one. I did come to India many times. I love it. It's a place where I want to come back and back because I every time I come, I have the impression of obviously not understanding and knowing this country and discovering so many incredible things. Maybe because I speak my mind, which is also something that men don't like. Very, very, very young. Even when I was 30, I looked like a 15 year old, almost. My, I had cute cheeks and things. Nobody took me seriously. I love the idea. I mean, I think love is the thing. It's not about, I've never been on a one night stand. I have to make this. <laughs> <laughs> Never. We watched, rewatched, discussed, debated almost every aspect of Netflix Emily in Paris by now. But that one character who'll stay on our mind for years is a stunning Sylvie played so exquisitely by Philippine. The incredible actor who's now being used as a perfect example of a tough boss is joining us for a very special chat. Hello, Philippine. How have you been? Hello. I'm very happy to be with you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much, you know, for giving us Emily in Paris. I mean, that's oh, one well, show that I... Well, it's not only me. I mean, this is like a whole fantastic crew. Darren Starr, who is the showrunner and, and writer and author and the one, the genius that had the idea of this. And then Lily Collins and obviously the whole cast and crew that were incredible. So, yeah, yeah. we're very happy with the what happened. So congratulations for the success of the show. What all have you been hearing from your uh, fans across the world? What's the reaction? Well, uh, yeah, the reaction was, uh, the reaction from people all over was, uh, they either love the badass queen, as they say in Instagram a lot, or, you know, my they kind of, or they don't understand why I'm so mean to, to Emily, or, <laughs> <laughs> or they're no they're kind of a lot of people do like Sylvie for some reason they kind of can relate to this tough but yet you can feel there's something underneath that we'll probably uncover on season two so what's happening with this lady but uh, I hope so well you know that's what it feels like but um, yeah it's 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 funny because I it was the first time I played such a tough part and I realized how interesting it is to take on such a, you know, such a tough and not likable character at the same, you know, in a way. Because uh, you kind of have to find compassion for even the people that you want to hate. So right. that's, that's something that I thought so, so beautiful about doing this character. And right. I'm obviously not Sylvie at all in my life. <laughs> I mean, I do probably have some of Sylvie's aspects, otherwise I wouldn't be able to play her, but uh, yeah. obviously not as radical as she can be. You know, she has this incredible jealousy. She has this incredible anger. And I don't have that in that, you know, that in those proportions. Like everybody, I have my own flaws. But, you know, when you're an actor, you have to take even like the little flaws that you have inside of yourself, your little shadow parts and make them huge in order to to play a character. So it's always very interesting. You take like the little 2% of you and make it 60%. Or you take, you know, the 3% of you, maybe 55%. So it becomes, um, it becomes the character. So it's always very interesting to go and look for those little demons we all have inside of us and make them bigger. <laughs> Um, you know, what's really empowering about Sylvie's character is that she isn't a self-sacrificing domestic woman and the sense of superiority is hard-earned. Now, when you read the script, was there any particular moment that, that you sort of realized, that made you realize that, you know, this is when I should take up the role? Was there any particular moment? Well, actually, what happened is when I read, I read not even the script, I read some scenes okay. that I had to prepare for in order to convince Darren Starr to take me on the show. So, and when I read the sides, the scenes that I was, I was gonna play in front of him, I realized I knew that person. And I actually do, I knew her. I knew her right away, I knew who she was. And that was incredibly, it was, it was so, it was so strange and so obvious for me that I had to do the show. 
but you know, I, I read in front of him. I didn't know when he was gonna choose, if he was gonna choose me, choose me, when he was gonna tell me, you know. And uh, weeks and weeks went by without having any answer. Okay. But I knew this V was for me. I don't know. I don't know why there was this feeling of. Uh, that I knew her, that I could play her. Right. Um, you know, Sylvie is also very powerful, but not even once did we ever see her raise her voice, which uh, a lot of viewers, including me, also felt was a lot similar to Miranda Priestley from Devil Wears Prada. You don't really have to be loud to be intimidating. So, uh, have you been hearing anything about the comparisons between the two absolutely popular and also loved characters? Well, it's, it's very humbling for me that people speak about because obviously this actress is like a goddess to me, Meryl Streep. So uh, it's very humbling and I don't think I deserve that at all. I obviously did re-watch The Devil Wears Prada when I was you know, preparing for the role, but I didn't watch her only. I watched a lot of Betty Davis, a lot of Joan Crawford, a lot of you know characters, these actresses, these characters that had that, what you're saying is that people that are very intimidated, they don't need to speak loud, be, to be listened to they don't need to um yeah they have this inner strength that is like steel and um and so yeah it, it, she was not my own that character of miranda Priestley was not my only inspiration but obviously she was she was in my head uh when even when i read the script i mean it, it's, it's very obvious but you know but uh i'm very humble because i did hear that from some saying oh this is a new Miranda Presley and I was like what you know I could never dream of being um, anywhere near Meryl, Meryl Streep even in, in, a, in a same sentence I'm like what <laughs> so yeah so it was like yeah it's a, it's a gift that people are saying this and I don't know if I deserve it but I'm taking it anyway <laughs> <laughs> of course you totally deserve that uh, you have so many zinger lines on the show each of your dialogue you know is a favorite with the viewers What's the most favorite dialogue and why don't you, you know, do that for us? Why don't you sort of just speak those beautiful lines for us? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, well, I do like that one. It says, no, uh, which is, do you want to have lunch? No, I'll have a cigarette. You know, <laughs> I'll have a cigarette. I love that one. Or, um... If this dialogue uh, was to be, you know, said by Miranda Prisley, how would that be done? If this was to be said by um, Meryl Streep, uh, cigarette. Yes. How would he get in the character and do that? <laughs> yeah, we'll have a cigarette. I guess she would do it like that. Had Sylvie been a man, don't you think people would not have really noticed anything? You know, even failed relationships except how good she was at a job. Yes. <laughs> yes, they would probably say that she's like a very good boss because she has, you know, that kind of strength that um, as a woman, uh, we expect her to be a little bit more feminine. But uh, she has that kind of, also that kind of very Parisian feminine side to her, which are these women in Paris, these power women in Paris are exactly like her. I mean, they're really, they're very, um, they're very dry, even though they have something that's very um, vulnerable mm -hmm. underneath. So it's that's really interesting. You see this this very dry. This it's an attitude. That it's a it's a character they have to put on in order to be respected. Right. So right. they have to become super dry, and um, but they have this vulnerability underneath. I mean, unless it's been 50 years and since they've been in this in the business and then they kind of forgot about uh any kind of feminine <laughs> act attitude they would have but uh yeah there's a dryness to these women and yet there's something underneath that wants to wants to just you know rest in a way mm -hmm. uh but uh sh yes i think if if she was a man we wouldn't we wouldn't discuss her character. I mean, her psychological aspect. We would say, okay, she's a good boss. Yes. He's yes. a good boss. Uh, you know, when you started out, uh, Philippine, was it also important for you to develop a hard shell to survive in the showbiz industry? Because, I mean, I mean, let's accept it. You know, it is a male dominated industry all over. So was it important for you to act like a man to gain acceptance? 
Well, yes, and I, I was never able to do it. Because, uh, first of all, because I looked uh, very, very, very young. Even when I was 30, I looked like a 15 year old, almost. My, I had cute cheeks and things. Nobody took me seriously. Um, so I did get really mad, which didn't make it easy because people don't like women when they're mad, True. especially men. They don't like, I mean, she's just impossible. She's just, she has her, you know, she has her moods or whatever, and we hate it, you know. Um, so yes, it's, it's a difficult road, and I'm not sure today that um, acting like a man is the solution. Mm -hmm. All right. That's I think... Good. I think uh, if women act like men, that's not the way because actually we're always going to be trapped in something that's not going to work. That's what I'm seeing now. It's like actually it's the opposite. It's bringing something totally different to the table okay. and trying to convince them that this different thing is important. Right. Uh, you know, it's also very important in society and it's very important to, you know, to, to, to value it. But yeah. we have to bring something different to the table. We can't bring the same things because we don't have hmm. them. So we okay. do become like very dry, very, mm, very, you know, goddess of war. But you know, it's, it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it's not going to work for a long time. <laughs> right. Do you also, are you able to intimidate men in real life? Do they sort of, you know, feel scared of you? Uh, I know that men uh, are scared of me many times. I don't know why. Maybe because I speak my mind, which is also something that men don't like. Exactly. <laughs> True. Uh, I have an opinion. I'm very opinionated. So that's something that, you know, probably a lot of men don't like. But I think that it's changing. Younger, The younger generation is, uh, is a bit different. Yes, yes. Hopefully. <laughs> now, the show is getting mixed reactions. Now, you know, they, they, there's a section that's absolutely in love uh, with the show for the cultural differences, you know, that have been put forth. And there are also those who abhor U.S. sense of entitlement infused by Emily's character. Now, what's your reaction to these diverse reactions, you know, that you've been getting for your show? Wow, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, I, here in France, what I got, most of what I got was, okay, there's a lot of cliche, na na na, yes, you know, the yes. French didn't like that. Um, and I thought it was funny because actually, uh, I like, I kind of like the cliche as an actor because you can play with it, you can have yeah. fun with it in a comedy. So it's kind of nice not to be naturalistic and to have those very strong, very bold characters. I mean, bold in the sense, you know, very big traits. So, and there are cliches, but there, if you play with them, it becomes a bit more than cliche. Um, and also, they got a lot of criticism from the, for the fact mm. that of filming Paris like that. And I was thinking, I mean, this is an homage to Paris. Darren loves Paris. He didn't, I mean, it wasn't, this wasn't a show that came out of somebody else's head. It wasn't Netflix. It was nobody else. It wasn't, it was Darren who wanted to do a show in France, in Paris, because he loves uh, the city and he has friends here and he comes a lot. So it was really an homage to Paris and, and, well, people are starting to slow down with that because the beginning was like, yeah, there's a lot of, especially the French. Okay, yes. Paris is not like that. You know, but now, yeah, but now they're really happy that Paris is, is looked at in such a beautiful way. And next year, when all this, you know, crisis is over, Paris is going to be full with tourists that have seen Emily in Paris. Yeah. And they're going to be so happy to run. <laughs> Yeah, and there's this controversy between French yeah. culture and yeah. and what people that didn't get also is how how um, Darren makes fun of Americans through exactly. Emily a lot. I mean, as I told you at the beginning, she's a sugar-coated, arrogant little you know young girl, yeah. and and that's why he put a character like mine in front of her, saying, "Complete fraud." Yes. you know. Otherwise, uh, you know, and, and so it's it's both cultures that are really made fun of. And this is, you know, we all need to be able to take mockery. Otherwise, what, you know? Right. What tricks, according to you, should Americans learn from French? What tricks? Well, maybe some uh, dressing. Okay. So uh, not in New York. I say. No, in New York, I mean, they know how to dress and, you know, 
but elsewhere. Um, I don't know, eating. You know, that's very silly. You should eat healthier, you know, in America. <laughs> um, and just relaxing. And also this thing about, you know, not not finding, not being at work, like not being a workaholic, basically. Sure. Sure. So what else can we expect from season two? Something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know because they're, they're really, they're not even writing right now because Darren is shooting something else. So I don't even, I don't really know. We have talked about a lot of things and I really hope we can enjoy, I, I mean, I hope we're gonna, uh, we're gonna use the office more because there's mm -hmm. a lot of situations in the office that can happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, between mm -hmm. the characters, a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Gabriel's gonna win or not. That, <laughs> I don't know. Because they have put a little, because Darren put a little devil in there when Antoine comes and buys the restaurant. Yes. We don't know what's going to happen there, you know? Uh, so I don't know. Um, and and uh, well, I hope for Sylvie, there's going to be interesting backstories that we can hmm. bring up. That's right. I think that's, yes. Yes, yeah. that's exactly you know, what we wanted to know. We wanted to know Sylvie as a person here, which wasn't really highlighted much in the first season. Yes, right. India is known for its films. Uh, you know, we have these huge industries that are churning out so many movies. Have you seen any of Indian films? Is there anything about Indian cinema that has sort of uh, grabbed your attention over the years? Listen, I'm very ashamed because the last thing I saw that was Indian was like probably like a beautiful film that I saw maybe 15 years ago or something. Okay. Was it Deva? This very long. Um, Devdas. 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 Okay. And I went like, what? You know, this thing about the Indian actors and how 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 strong they are in their expression, how strong they are in their the skills they have. They're they, technically they're incredible. Like we're like we're beginners, you know, compared to them because they have incredible skills, incredible technique. I'm, and I know how hard um, it must have been to, I mean, it is to shoot these films because, I mean, technically they're incredible. And um, I'm always, no, I'm really fascinated. I, I can't say anything about them particularly because I don't, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed not to know better uh, your cinema. And I think I'm going to dive into it after this interview where I'm, I'm feeling kind of uncomfortable. Well, not knowing more but yeah because yeah because it is beautiful it's really beautiful i have to say something that i didn't say i did come to india many times i love it it's a place where i want to come back and back because i every time i come i have the impression of obviously not understanding and knowing this country and discovering so many incredible things and i'm i'm really moved and touched by by the people and the country every time i come it's like, it's incredible how strong it is. And I'm a Iyengar practitioner for mm -hmm. yoga Iyengar for 15 oh, years yeah. now. So I'm, wow. yes, yeah. Any other Indian thing that you're absolutely in love with? Ayurveda. <laughs> okay, Ayurveda. What do you know about yeah. that? that? That's interesting. Tell us well, something I've about done, that. I've done, well, I've done, I've done two 21 day cures uh, in the past five years and I'm, I find it and I, I want to go back. I actually wanted to go back this year. I couldn't, but I want to go back as regularly as possible because it really it brings me back to life every time I do it. So uh, it's I'm fascinated by the knowledge that you you have as a culture. It's true. Really, it's true. I mean, really, I'm fascinated. It's 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 impressive, mm -hmm. and we always we as Westerners are very humble. I mean, I am very humbled by you know the culture and the the richness the strength of that, you know, of the knowledge. First, style or fashion? Style. Deadline or quality work? Quality work. Clothing or accessories? Clothing. Conventional thoughts or millennial ideas? Um, millennials. All right. Success or sacrifice? Oh, success. Demanding boss or bitchy co-workers? Demanding <laughs> boss. One night stand or traditionally romantic love? 
romantic love. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no explanation. I really love, I love the idea. I mean, I think love is the thing. It's not about, I've never been on a one night stand. I have to make this. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> the, the but, you know, it's really not my thing. It's really not my thing. I have to. I have to be in love. All right. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, next, uh, money or knowledge? Knowledge. Social media or real world interaction? Real world. <laughs> <laughs> Self-centered perfectionism or value system? Value system. All right. Plants. Not really. Not as much as the Italians or you know other people that I know in Europe. No, the French are kind of are kind of colder to women than we think. Than oh. you think? You foreigners think? Oh, because everybody is falling in love with Emily. Like every everybody is finding them charming. But I know, but it's a story. <laughs> okay, it's not really sort of you know um, establishing the truth. Then uh, don't think of working in France without knowing the language. Is this true? Mm, yeah, I guess so. They don't speak other languages. The French are quite lazy. That is one of my points. <laughs> okay, I was just coming to that. <laughs> now, French don't like being lectured by co-workers about their work ethics. Mm, yeah, that's true. They take it quite bad. Okay. They're kind of, they're very, yeah, they're very, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Is it very difficult to fire someone in France, in Paris? Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult, but not as the way they say it in the, in the show, but yes, it's, diff it's more difficult than in America, for instance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the French are rude, lazy, sexist, and ignorant. Or let's say Parisians are rude, lazy, sexist, and ignorant. Okay. I'd say the Parisians are not that lazy at work. Uh, sexist, yes. Uh, rude, yes. And what else? And ignorant. Half and half. For some things they're not, and for some things they really are. Okay. Yeah. They're kind of self-centered. Okay. So they can't really, you know, be curious of the whole world. Okay. All right. Um, uh, affairs at the workplace, that's a regular thing in Paris. A what? At the workplace? Sorry? Affairs Affair. at the workplace? Oh. A very regular thing in Paris. I don't think so. No. Is it true that uh, Parisians don't speak as loudly as Americans? I remember, you know, there's this one scene where Emily is introducing and then, you know, the co-worker says, why are you shouting? Yeah, it's true. That's true. Okay. French women are thin because they skip lunch and they only smoke and have coffee. <laughs> no, I guess it's because they eat differently than, uh, than most of the Americans, but yeah, no, no, no. They don't smoke that much anymore. Okay. That's, right. a, that's, yeah, that's another story. Yeah. Right. Why didn't you tell us? No, no, I'm saying it's, it's like, it's a different story in the sense. Yeah. They used to smoke. We used to be big chain smokers here, but mm -hmm. uh, all these laws and things kind of calmed everybody down and people are more aware of health issues with cigarettes. But, um, so there used to be the generation before me, maybe, yeah, was, my mother was a chain smoker, for instance. Okay. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Philippine. Any last message? Any last message for all your fans across the world who've been lauding, re-watching Emily in Paris and waiting for season two? Well, the, the thing I can say is I'm totally overwhelmed and humbled by the, the response we've had on this show. And I'm so, you know, I feel like really, I'm very moved by what I, what I hear, what I read on my Instagram and everything. And I'm, and thank you guys for liking the show so much. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I hope we can bring more joy and more, you know, and more, yeah, more fun and more joy, more distraction from sometimes the hardship of this world uh, with this with season two, really. And um, and try not to hate Sylvie too much. We'll see. She's she's not as simple as you think. Thank you so much, Philippine, for having this so wonderful chat thank with you. us and sharing your perspective. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.